quarterback for RPI today, I should mention that. Throw is incomplete. And McCormick was looking for Walker Sutton around the 45 of Widener, and it ended up going incomplete. It was way overthrown. It was thrown towards the sidelines, and Walker Sutton was more towards the hash marks. So incomplete on second down, and RPI quickly in a third down situation. So we know from the, the previous two weeks that Jake Kazagnowski was listed as the starter. We didn't know if he was, we didn't know he was not playing against Hobart. That was a game day decision. Turns out DiMatteo started, and then McCormick came in on the second drive. Last week against Union, Union McCormick was the starter for RPI, and he is the starter, listed as the starter today. So 
That's Justin McCormick in at quarterback for RPI. Third down and 10 for the Engineers from their own 25-yard line. McCormick drops back, puts the ball up in the air. Faraday can't get it, and that was some good D there. Faraday was, ball was a little, thrown a little bit off target, but Makai Stinnett on the D for Widener got in front of that and prevented Faraday from making a catch. So RPI with a very quick three and out here on their first possession of the game. And they will be punting. Anderson Burke, I believe, is going to be the punter. Elstein punted for part of the Union game last week, but he is not listed on the two deep. And it is Burke with the punt. The punt is caught and up along the sidelines on the far side. And who was that? That was number four. Also not on the two deep for Widener. I think that was Jordan Baxter who ended up getting that. Yep, that was Baxter on the punt return. He ends up going out of bounds at around the 43-yard line for Widener. So the pride will come out for their first possession of the game. We have 14.03 to go here in the first quarter. No score after RPI had the three and out on the first possession of the game. And that is quarterback Chase Deal out there for Widener. Three wide out formation. You have two people in the backfield. Handoff is going to go to Thompson, their leading rusher on first down. He's going to run straight ahead, and he gets out to the 47-yard line. So a pickup of four for Widener. So Chase Deal, the quarterback for Widener. Sean Thompson, the running back. Isaac Hostetter, Zach Vanskovich, and Jordan Baxter are the wide receivers. Ian Hare is the tight end. Second down and six for Widener at their own 47-yard line. No score first quarter. Three wideouts for the Pride. Handoff goes to Thompson. He's going to run straight ahead once again, and he's going to get across the 50 down to about the RPI 49. That's another pickup of four for the Pride. Sean Brogan, Cody Rusing, Trey Evangelisto, Ashton Spar, and Matt Thomas are the offensive line for the Wagner. No, not, I knew I was going to do that. I knew I was going to do that. Widener. I was going to get Wagner, Wilson, Widener confused. It is the Widener Pride that RPI is playing today. Third down and two at the RPI 49-yard line for the Pride. Tom sticks the hand off. He's going to go left. He's going to find room, and he's going to get the first down. He gets three yards, only needed two. D'Agostino for RPI comes up, makes the tackle but it's enough for the Pride to move the markers and they will be to the 40, just about the 46 yard line and it'll be a first down for Widener. 12.45 to go here, first quarter, no score, RPI versus Widener. Three receivers to the right, you got a tight end on the left and one man in the backfield. That's gonna be a handoff to Casey. Casey's gonna go left over towards the sidelines and he's gonna get pushed out of bounds inside the 40. Yeah, he's gonna be out at the 39 yard line. That'll be a pickup of seven for Widener. So uh, what killed RPI against Hobart, the running game in the second half, teams have focused on that. And I'm sure looking at the last three games that RPI has played, that Hobart game is right in there and Widener took a look at that and saw what was going on. And they have put it on the ground to start out today's game. So that was Bryce Casey on the run for Widener on first down. Second down and three. You've got single receiver on the left, two on the right, two men in the backfield. Thompson stays in the block and Deal's going to throw and he throws it to the RPI sideline. That's incomplete. Call Jordan Baxter the intended receiver around the 25, but he was much more in towards the hash marks than where the ball was, which was more towards the sidelines. So it's incomplete on second down. That'll set up a third down and three for the Pride. Deal in the offense, looking over towards the sidelines to get the play in. Thompson will be the running back. Three receivers on the short side, balls on the left hash mark, three receivers on the left. Tight end on the right. Thompson to the right of Deal in the backfield. Now Casey's going to go, nope, they're front of that. Baxter's going to go in motion. Looking to throw his Deal. Deal tosses, it's tipped and caught. Yes, caught by Baxter at the 35 yard line. And he's got a flag on the play afterwards. This was in the backfield. This came out late. So if the play stands, there would be a first down for the Pride at the 35-yard line, waiting to see what the call is. And the officials are going to talk about this. Mike Gregus is the referee for today's game. No score here, first quarter. Which way is the ball going? As I really 
I would think of roughing the passer, but I didn't think Deal got knocked down. What are we going? Okay, this is going against Widener. This is going to get backed up 15 yards. So the call is an unnecessary roughness against one of the men on the offensive line. Cody Rusing is going to get called for the unnecessary roughness. So it was a first down. It's after the play, back up of 15 yards, and Widener is now back at the 50-yard line for a first and 10. No score here in the first quarter. Widener first and 10 at the 50. Deal throws, looking for Baxter along the sidelines, and that was overthrown a little bit lower this time. I think he got a hand on it, but he was reaching up pretty far, and he barely touched that, and it goes incomplete. So it'll be a second down and 10 for Widener at the 50-yard line. Widener in there, you call it road whites. They've got yellow helmets, yellow pants. The colors for Widener are yellow and blue, but if you just look at the uniform, uh, because it's so much yellow and white, it's kind of got a Green Bay Packers feel, Green Bay Packers feel to it, even though the Packers are green and yellow. There's, there's not a lot of blue out there. Pass to Baxter, complete at the 35-yard line, and that'll be a first down for the Pride. As Deal found Baxter moving over the middle, found him in the run, he caught it, went to the ground immediately on the slide as he got the ball, but it's a first down for it Widener at the 35 yard line. We have 11.25 to go here in the first quarter in Troy. No score, RPI versus Widener. First and 10 for the Pride at the 35 yard line. Single wide out on the left. Thompson has trouble getting the handoff. He bobbled it, he wanted to go left, now he's going to go straight and he's gonna turn what could have been a bad situation, losing the ball possibly into a three yard gain. Uh, that was a not smooth handoff between Deal and Thompson. So, Pride looking over to the sidelines for the play. It'll be a second down. And seven for the Pride. They are now at the RPI 32. Deal. Hands off to Casey. Casey goes straight ahead, and he's going to get about to the 27. Actually, the RPI defense makes the stop. It'll be third down and about two. on the right, one on the left. Single running back. Out of the shotgun. Deal is going to hand off to Casey. Casey goes right. He's going to cut up field. He's got the first down inside the 20. And he stopped around the 18. So Widener considering to move the ball on this first possession of their first half for them. RPI was a three and out. Widener moving well. They're down to the 18 yard line in the red zone. 9.38 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Widener will have four receivers on the right. This is a naked backfield for Deal. Four receivers on the right, one receiver on the left. And Deal looks right. Now he's going left. Looks like he was planning to go there all the time, and that's incomplete. As it was overthrown, he gave a, Deal gave a quick look to the right and it appears that the left was always going to be his intended target. That was Stokes, the intended receiver on the left side. Second down and 10 for Weiner at the 18 yard line. Now they'll put two receivers on the left, tight end on the right, also a slot back on the right. Widener back to the ground. Thompson trying to turn the corner on the right side. He's going to get forced out of bounds by Von Tobel at about the 15-yard line. That'll make it third and seven. RPI's defense up front. 
Blake Terezi, Nate Sicard, and Brian McNeil. The linebacks for C.J. Shoemaker, Success Frederick, Desmond Von Tobel, and Anthony D'Agostino. And then the defensive backfield is Cassius Johnson, Carlos Davis, Diego Fernandez, and Cortez Garrett. Four wide receiver formation. Thompson in the backfield, third down and seven. Deal, looking right, looks end zone, and it is caught. Hostetter gets the reception from 15 yards out, and Widener takes a 6-0 lead on RPI. The only blemish really in that whole drive for Widener was the 15-yard personal foul. That backed them up to the 50-yard line from the 35. They recovered from that, moved it downfield, and they've got a 6-0 lead. Salona on the hold here for the conversion attempt. Widener trying to make it a 7-0 game. Running this right down to the end. Snap spot. The kick is up, and the kick from Patterson is good. We have 8.23 to go here in the first quarter, and Widener has a 7-0 lead on RPI. Again, that was deal to Hostetter for 15, Hostetter for 15 yards. Set up the first score of the game. Widener coming in a, after a loss against Delaware Valley last week. That was a 23 to six loss for Widener. RPI coming in after a loss to Union, 13 to seven. These two teams are playing and their opponents last week are playing. Union is at Delaware Valley today for an NCAA first round game. So kind of odd how that worked out. So Boyko is going to tee up the ball to kick off for Widener. Boots it away into the end zone and Walker Sutton will take a knee and RPI will take it up to 25 again. Didn't move the ball, RPI. Did not move the ball in their first possession. They started at the 25 and they punted while they were still on the 25 yard line. RPI needs to see better improvement from the offense. Only one score last week in the 13 to seven loss to Union. First and 10, RPI at the 25 yard line. Fake the handoff to White. McCormick throws over the middle. That is complete to Meissner and Meissner is all across the 50. He's on the Widener side of the field for an RPI first down. Meissner, a presence for RPI, but only his 11th catch of the year. And quick pass in the flat. This is an option play. Walker Sutton throws to right to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and is he in? Yes, he's in for the touchdown. So RPI quickly went to the line, put all the receivers on the right, threw a lateral to Walker Sutton, and then he hit White at around the 25. He goes in for the touchdown, and RPI's pulled to within one on the trick play. That was 40 plus yards. I, it happened so fast, I didn't have time to mentally log where the line of scrimmage is, and they're not using the scoreboard right now for that. So I have to wait for live stats to come up with that. Merrick on to try the extra point. Snap, spots down. Merrick's kick is up, and that is no good. Missed it to the right. So it's seven to six. Widener still has the lead with 7.59 to go here in the first quarter. RPI had kicking woes last week. Elstein missed two field goals. Uh, you can call that the difference in the game. That's because RPI lost by six, and just there, RPI missing on an extra point attempt. It was The kick did not look good as it was going up there. RPI is against the wind in this first quarter. 
uh, but still the kick itself just fundamentally did not look like a good kick. So RPI trailing seven to six as they are gonna send the ball to Widener. Widener will get their second possession of the game. Only a 24 second drive for RPI to get that touchdown. Merrick has the ball teed up at the 35 yard line. Low kick, it's gonna be taken by one of the up men at the 30 yard line to the 35 Ooh. and about the 38 yard line. Widener will start out in good field position on the low kick. Started out their previous drive at the 43, now they're gonna start out at the 38. Still waiting for live stats update on that pass play, but it was Walker Sutton to White on the touchdown for RPI. So first and 10 for Widener at their own 38. 7-6, they lead. Deal out of the shotgun, two receivers each side. Gives it to Thompson. Thompson's gonna go right, starts upfield at the numbers, and he's finally gonna get pushed down at about the 40 yard line. Makes a card on the tackle for RPI. Coach Arzernia mentioned trips to the Stag Bowl for Widener. This team has two national championships. They defeated Wabash in 1977 and Dayton in 1981. So two national titles for Widener. Second down and about eight pass. That is complete. That'll be a first down to 40, the RPI 45 yard line on the forward progress. Van Skovich on the catch for Widener. So he was right in the middle of the field, right where the eye is on RPI in the center of the field. And that's where they're gonna put the ball. So Widener with another first down as they have it first and 10 at the RPI 45 yard line, leading seven to six. That was a 48 yard touchdown pass from Walker Sutton to White to get RPI the touchdown on the previous drive. First and 10 for Widener at the 45 yard line. Take the handoff. And now Deal is going to throw downfield and overthrows his intended target, Hostetter. Hostetter had two men on him, probably about half a step ahead. Had the ball been on target, I think he would have caught it, but the ball was a little bit off. And so that goes incomplete. It'll be second down and 10 for Widener at the 45 yard line. And Widener with two stag ball wins, they're one of 11 schools that have multiple titles. Sun is out here in Troy. The lights are on, the sun is out. I'll get to the weather in a moment. Second down and 10. This is going to be handed off to Casey. He goes left, trying to turn the corner, and we've got a flag out back in the middle of the field. Casey goes out of bounds at the 40. So Bryce Casey goes out of bounds. He's on the run. Thompson's the main running back. Casey's the number two guy so far today. And he's been the number two guy on the season. Thompson comes into today's game with 696 yards. And Casey came in with 297 yards, both with a 4.4 yards per rush average. And this appears to be going against Widener. Well, this is going to be a hold against the Pride. That will back the Pride up to their own side of the field. They'll be at their own 45 for what will be a second and 20. Weiner coming from Chester, Pennsylvania. And uh, Chester is between Philadelphia and Wilmington in the very eastern part, southeastern part of Pennsylvania. The school originally started in Delaware, but then moved to Pennsylvania during the Civil War. Second down and 20 for Widener at the 45 yard line on their own side of the field. Four wide out formation. Deal, looking downfield, not much pressure there. Three-man rush, and he ends up throwing this away. Paul Vanskovich, the intended receiver on the left, but it was well into the Widener sidelines. 
Uh, I, I was going back to the weather. It was raining this morning here in Troy. Uh, I walked out of my building and I was surprised that it was, it, it was raining because the weather report didn't mention rain. And now the sun is shining and there's almost no clouds in the sky. So that happened around 1130. Things started to clear up. The sun is shining. The lights are still on because it was dark earlier. But now you don't really need them because the sun is out. Third down and 20 from the 45-yard line. Short pass that's incomplete. Looking for Baxter behind the line of scrimmage. That was about at the 44-yard line. He was looking for Baxter on a short pass. But it was thrown behind Baxter, and it goes incomplete. And Widener on fourth and long will be sending out the punt team. A.J. Salona will be out to punt for Widener. Sterling Walker Sutton is back at his own 20 yard line awaiting this kick. He has run back two punts for touchdowns this season. In consecutive games, he actually did it. Snap. Salona's kick is going to go to the sidelines. They're kicking away from him, and it's out of bounds. No opportunity for Walker Sutton to return that. So the Pride were willing to give up some yards just to not let Walker Sutton have a chance at a return. 5.51 to go here. First quarter in Troy. 7-6. to six. Widener leads RPI. And the ball went out of bounds where? 20-yard line. RPI will take it at the 20. So RPI not starting out in good field position. 25, 25, and 20. Average field position. And DiMatteo is coming in for RPI to play quarterback now. And his throw is complete to Faraday at the 40-yard line, 45. And he's going to be out of bounds after he crosses the 50-yard line. So he'll be out at the 48 of Widener. So RPI with a change in quarterback. DiMatteo is in there now for the engineer. As McCormick was the starter, he played the entire Union game, most of the Hobart game, and the first two drives here. But now DiMatteo is in. First down and 10, RPI at the 48-yard line, and that'll actually be a loss of yards. So on the rush, we'll end up losing them yards. They'll go back to the 50. So it'll be a second down and 12 for RPI as they're back to the 50-yard line. DiMatteo pass, that is complete. McGoey has it along the sidelines to the 40, finally dragged down by Kevin Davis. After he gets a first down, though, Davis brings him down at the 35-yard line, so RPI moves the chains. As uh, so they're going with a quick offense right now. Not usually RPI style, but they're doing that right now. Again, DiMatteo is in there at quarterback in place of McCormick. Don't know if that's permanent or just for this drive or what's going on, but he's the one in there right now. First down and 10, RPI, the 35 of Widener. 4.48 to go here in the first quarter. 7 to 6, RPI trails. Handoff goes to Buckley. Buckley tries to weave his way through, and he's going to be stopped after a gain of two. Jalen Walker grabbed him from behind and got the tackle. So only a pickup of two for RPI there. Second down and eight, RPI, 33-yard line. Buckley the running back, DiMatteo the quarterback. Two receivers on the right, slot back on the right, and we've got one man on the left. That is Faraday, the leading receiver for RPI. He's alone on the left right now. Second and eight, Buckley takes it, goes to the right, looking for a hole. He finds one to the 20, to the 15, and Buckley, under point, 25 to the 20, and Buckley is down just inside the 20, and that'll be another first down for RPI. So the ball's, well, just on the 20-yard line. RPI has it. 7-6, to six, Engineers Trail. 3.40 to go here in the first quarter. Three receivers to the right, bunched together. Faraday's alone on the left. DiMatteo looks to the left, pump fakes. Now he's going to go downfield. End zone. Faraday's got it. Touchdown, RPI. That's DiMatteo to Faraday. For 20 yards, and RPI takes the lead.
Merrick out to try the extra point. The last one did not look good. Meisner is the holder for RPI. Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and this one looks much better. That's straight through. So the kick is good for Merrick. 13 to seven RPI leads with 3.31 to go in this first quarter. Faraday coming into today's game, 57 catches on 802 yards with six touchdowns. Now he's up to seven touchdowns as the leading receiver for RPI in both numbers, yards, and touchdowns. I never got a chance to give the RPI offensive line with the offensive starters. Uh, Shane Allison, the tight end, You've got Hayden Faraday, Sterling Walker Sutton, and Gil Goldsmith, all the wide receivers. The running back is Christian Buckley. The quarterback, starting quarterback, was Justin McCormick, but Anthony DiMatteo was in there for the last drive. Merrick getting ready to kick off for RPI. Last one was a low kick. This one is a much higher kick. That is going to be taken at the five yard line to the 10. And back to the 10 as he was going towards the 15. A slide down at about the 11, as I think that was Malachi Holmes on the return. Not listed as one of the kickoff people. That would be Holmes, the only number 88 on the roster for Widener. So Widener starting out at their own 11. This will be their third possession of the game. Easily the worst start in terms of field position for the Pride. In the sunshine here in Troy. Widener back at their own 11. Four wide receiver formation. Thompson the running back. Deal has trouble with the snap. Kicks it up under pressure and he's going to get sacked. He'll get caught at the nine yard line. As Deal out of the shotgun had trouble with the snap. Yeah. The field is drying off. Obviously, it was wet because it rained here this morning. How wet it still is, I don't know. But it, it's in the sun, so there will be, and it also drains, so there will be a certain amount of drying off, but it could still actually be wet. Could have been the ball was slick when it got back to Deal. Second down and 12 for our, for Widener, pardon me, back at the nine yard line. This is a run straight ahead and this gets them back to the original line of scrimmage for this series. As Thompson on the carry gets them back to the 11 yard line. It'll be a third down and 10 for the Pride at the 11. Decent crowd for an ECAC game. We've got Widener fans on the other side of the field. Third and 10, Widener at their own 11. They'll fake the handoff. First time under pressure. This will be a sack. It will not be a safety. Forward progress will have deal at the one. He got pushed back into the end zone by the RPI defense, but he was pushed back from about the two. They're gonna put it at the two. He was pushed back clearly into the end zone. He didn't go there willingly. So a sack on that third down and 10 play for Widener and they're going to be punting from the end zone right now. RPI with the lead 13 to seven, looks like they're gonna start winning this field position battle as they're looking to get good field position. Salona from the back of the end zone gets the kick away. It goes to the, it bounces near the 40, 45. Good roll for Widener. And it'll roll out of bounds around the RPI 49 yard line. Uh, 
so nice work. There's also a flag on the field back around the 12-yard line. That was nice work by Salona back there. Uh, under pressure, he doesn't have the full 15 yards, and he's able to move, get the ball away, and not only get a good kick away, but also get the roll on it. So we're waiting to see what this flag is all about. Ball's right now positioned at the RPI 49-yard line pending this penalty call. No, it's a personal foul against RPI. Originally, the referee just originally signaled it was personal foul against Widener, but it's actually against RPI. So RPI is going to get less good field position. That's a very horrible way I just phrased that. Horror field position is the way I wanted to phrase that. They'll go from the 49 back to the 34. We have 109 to go here in the first quarter. 13 to 7. RPI is on top of Widener. And RPI is now back at their own 34 yard line. Still their best start for a drive today. RPI scored touchdowns on their last two drives. And it is Di Matteo still out there at quarterback for RPI. Still it's good field position. So first and ten for the engineers. And there'll be a handoff, and McCormick was also out there. He passes complete to Faraday, and he gets to the other side of the field. Am I correct on that? Yes, Di Matteo and McCormick were both out there. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's a 12. Yes, it is. So Di Matteo and McCormick both out there. So Di Matteo took the snap, got it to McCormick, and McCormick threw to Faraday, and Faraday got to the other side of the field. It's so a first and 10 RPI at the 46. And they fake the handoff to McCormick this time, and Di Matteo keeps it, and he's going to get stopped at the 48. So he's going to lose a couple of yards on this. So if you're wondering why I'm puzzled, there's, we're seeing things we haven't seen from RPI so far this year. Now Di Matteo is going to go off the field. McCormick staying out there at quarterback. So RPI not committing to either quarterback at this point. The defense for Widener, Dom D'Alessio, uh, Nate Brown, Cade Brennan, and Jalen Walker are the line up front. The linebackers are Terrence Thompson, Colin Merck, and Kevin Davis. And that's the end of the first quarter here in Troy. 13 to 7, RPI has the lead. They also have the ball uh, for what will be a second and 12 once play starts again. Joshua Salter and Daryl Walker are the cornerbacks. And Michael Sean Lieber and Jacob Koppelman are the safeties for Widener. And just quickly, the RPI offensive line right, Cerulli. Catan, Morello, and Montero are the line up front. Danny Beckenhus, who normally starts, is not starting today. And may actually be not, not be playing today, as he was listed as an alternate on the 58-man roster. Both teams had to submit a roster. This is played just like an NCAA game. So there's a limited roster. RPI can't have 100 people dressed. There is a limit to how many people. It was 58, I believe, who could dress for today's game. So both teams are restricted to those players to play in today's game. One quarter gone by here in Troy. 13 to 7, RPI with the lead over Widener in the White Law Bowl. This is the second time RPI's, well, the second consecutive season RPI's played in the White Law Bowl here. They beat Morrisville last year in this same bowl game. For Widener, this is the first time they played in the bowl named after a person. They have played previously in the ACAC Bowls, but that's back when they were geographically named. First, or pardon me, second and 13 for RPI at the 49-yard line. And McCormick rolls out to his left. He's under a lot of pressure. Now he's getting away from that, goes to his right, comes over to the RPI side of the field, throws, and that's incomplete. So a lot of pressure. There's a four-man rush by Widener on that play. A lot of pressure on McCormick. He went all the way to in between the numbers and the hash marks on the left side of the field, came all the way back to the other side, keeping the play alive, ends up throwing it away. And it'll be a third down and 13 now for RPI at the 49 of Widener.
McCormick came into today's game. His stats, 41 of 69, 525 yards passing, two touchdowns, three interceptions. And on third down, White's going to take the handoff, and he's going to get caught in the backfield. Uh, that play never looked good. Terrence Thompson on the tackle for Widener. That was a solo open field tackle for Thompson. And so the enthusiasm from earlier in the drive has faded, and RPI on fourth down will be sending out the punt team. Burke came into the game averaging 33.2 yards per punt. Kicks this one away, high kick, fair catch signaled. It bounces out of bounds. I don't think it was touched by Widener. It'll go out of bounds at the 16 yard line. We have 14 away to go here in the first quarter in Troy. 13 to seven, RPI has the lead. This is easily, uh, nope. I was going to say the worst start. No, Widener started the last drive at the 11. They're now starting at their own 16. First and 10 for the Pride at the 16-yard line. Three receivers on the left. And that's the direction Deal is looking. Throws downfield, up and drops. It drops incomplete. Baxter, the intended receiver, he was double covered around the 45. And it was a jump ball, basically, back there. Johnson and Garrett on the D for RPI. And nobody could come down with it. So it's incomplete on first down. RPI in their home black jerseys with white numbers, white pants today for RPI and the black helmets. Be an easy TV game if you're watching this in black and white. Second down and 10 from the 16 yard line. Deal has another problem with the fumble. That is dropped and now Deal starts to run with it. He's going to get hit and he's down to 10 yard line. Another problematic snap there for Widener. And he actually, the, you can see the referee threw the marker because it's technically a fumble. He lost it, got it back again and then got a rough hit at the 10 yard line. Clean hit, but a rough hit at the 10 yard line and he goes down, and it'll be a third and 16 for Widener. Two receivers each side. Single man in the backfield for the Pride. Thompson, the running back, leaves, and under pressure is Deal, and he's going to get sacked, and he's going to go down. That was Brian McNeil who got him, and he's down at the seven. And the punt team will be coming out for the pride. Salona is in the end zone, in, in the shade actually. The gymnasium's blocking the sun there. I snap, gets it down, gets it away. And this is going to bounce inside the 35 and touched by Widener. They'll pick it up eventually as they touched it and moved it forward. But where will they spot the ball? They're going to spot it at the 34 yard line, I think. Yes, it'll be at the 34 of Widener. It's on Widener's side of the field where RPI is going to take over. 12.29 to go here, first half. RPI with a 13 to seven lead on Widener. Who's in a QB now for RPI? I believe that's DiMatteo. Yep, DiMatteo pass. That was complete to Goldsmith at the 35. Goldsmith makes a couple of moves and he's gonna get down to the 30. Thompson was able to get a piece of him and then got an assist for that tackle at the 30 yard line. So let's pick up a four for RPI. Wind is blowing in RPI's favor. That's both the flagpole and on top of the, the goalpost. So that is blowing towards the gymnasium here at the East Campus Stadium. 
but I think everybody was surprised by that snap. Di Matteo hands off to White. White strings out on the left. He's got a first down. White to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and tackled inside the 10. It'll be a first and goal, or there haven't been the 10. It'll be at the 10. It'll be a first and goal RPI on White's run. White, the Liberty League Rookie of the Year. Came into this game the leading rusher for RPI, 88 attempts, 488 yards, 5.5 average with five touchdowns entering today's play. First and goal RPI at the 10, up 13 to seven. Gives to White once again, finds a hole, and White's gonna get inside the five. Uh, Mert on the tackle there for Widener, possibly saving a touchdown, getting him at the five yard line. It'll be a second and goal from about the five and a half or four and a half. It's just inside the five yard line. Second and goal RPI, receivers to the right. Di Matteo is going to hand off to White once again. Breaks one tackle, stays on his feet, close. Close, but not in. He's down at the one. He just got grabbed by the leg before he could go in. I believe that was Mert again on the tackle for Widener, preventing another preventing the touchdown again. So it'll be a third down and goal from about the one for RPI. Faraday and Goldsmith are wide to the right. Now Allison's gonna shift over to the left. White's in the backfield. DiMatteo's gonna keep it himself and he's gonna run in for the touchdown. From one yard out, Di Matteo runs it in, and RPI has a 19 to seven lead. Merrick have to try the extra point. Meissner on the hold. <laughs> Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. Make that 20 to seven. RPI on top. Mike Baranek is the head coach for Widener. Again, they came in seven and three overall, six and three in the Middle Atlantic Conference. You could MAC, you could call that the MAC, but it's obviously not the same MAC that Siena plays in. The, the Siena Conference, or the conference Siena is in, has two A's in the middle of that. And of course, Ralph Isernia, the head coach for RPI, coming in seven and three and three and three in the Liberty League. That would be fourth in the Liberty League. Top four teams in the Liberty League all in the postseason this year, Ithaca and Union are in the NCAAs, Hobart and RPI are in ECAC bowl games. Widener waiting the kickoff for what would be their fifth possession today. They scored a touchdown on their first drive and after that it's been three punts and their field position on the last two possessions is not good starting inside their own 20. Kick is away. That will be taken at the five, and no fair catch signal. And if the player was originally thinking that he was going to take a knee, but you can. You have to you can call a, you can take a knee in the end zone and get a touchback. You can't do it once you're outside. You have to call for a fair catch to get that. And he's going to get out to about the 23-yard line. So that's where Widener will take over on their fifth possession of today's game. So I mentioned the college moved to Pennsylvania in 1862. It became the Pennsylvania Military College in 1892. And that's the name until 1970s, 1972. They changed the name to Widener. So there are still references to the Pennsylvania Military College or PMC on the web. First down for Widener at the 23 yard line pass. That is complete. And out at the 30 yard line is Vanskovich. So he picks up seven. As I was looking through, I, I saw the people admitted to the Athletics Hall of Fame recently, and there were references to one of the players, he played for PMC and with a different nickname, and that's because they had a different nickname and they had a different name up until 1972. Their 
previously the Pioneers and changed their name to the Pride. Second and three at the 30-yard line. Hands off to Thompson. He hits his own lineman. Now he'll move ahead, and he'll get a first down as he gets beyond the 33-yard line. And we've got a flag coming in after the play. We've already had a couple of personal fouls in this game. Twenty to seven RPI leads here in the second quarter as the officials are meeting to discuss who this penalty is going to be against. This was that looked like it was after the play, so Widener should have a first down regardless of which way this goes. Depends on where the ball is going to be. So Widener is getting called for an unsportsmanlike conduct. So they should have the first down, but this will back them up 15. So they'll go from the 33 to about the 18 yard line. The Pride at the moment not helping their cause as they trail by 13 with 9.35 to go in the first half. Hundred and fifty nine receiving yards so far today for RPI versus fifty two for Widener. That's the big difference in yeah. today's game. Two hundred and five yards on nineteen plays for RPI, twenty or eighty yards on twenty six plays for Widener. So back to the eighteen yard line goes the Pride. After the personal foul, it's the second personal foul against the Pride. RPI has also taken a personal foul call. First and ten for Widener at their own eighteen. Take the hand off to Thompson. Deal throws over the middle. That's incomplete. And he was getting rid of that right as Nate Sicard was hitting him. Yeah, I just saw the replay. He, he let go as Nate Sicard had just grabbed him. Uh, so incomplete pass. It'll be second down and 10 at the 18-yard line for Widener. Thompson leaves the backfield. He's going to be a wide out on the left. Three, three wide outs on the right, two on the left for Widener as they line up. Deal in the shotgun. Now Thompson goes back to the backfield and Deal hands off to Thompson. Thompson's going to run left and he really can't turn it upfield. He's going to get stopped maybe for a loss of one back to the 17. That'll make it third down and 11 for Widener. The first drive went exceptionally well for the Pride. They took one penalty, other than that, moved the ball downfield very smoothly and into the touchdown, and after that, it's been a grind. Third down and 11, back at the 17-yard line for the Pride. Two receivers each side. Deal out of the backfield, or in the shotgun. Looking downfield, throws, that was tipped, and it'll go incomplete. That got tipped by one of the linemen, incomplete pass on third down, and Widener will be punting again. Salona, who's done a good job punting, They've put him back in some difficult positions. Twice he had to punt out of his own end zone. This time he'll be about his own three yard line. Walker Sutton's at about the 45. Good snap, kick is away. Walker Sutton is going to let this, now he's gonna pick it up at the 50. It bounced, he had trouble seeing it and he's gonna get caught at about the 49. Joe put the ball right at the 50-yard line, and Sean Lieber on that tackle for Widener. That was a good tackle against Walker Sutton. Walker Sutton had trouble seeing the ball because of the sun, so he was shading his eyes. He was being very sure not to move his arm as he was shading his eyes, not to call a fair catch. Uh, then when it bounced and it bounced to him, he picked it up, but nice defensive work by Sean Lieber prevents basically any yards on that return. RPI at the 50-yard line. 
for their sixth possession of the game, leading 20 to seven with 8.23 to go in the first half. Three receiver formation, tight end on the right for RPI. Handoff's gonna go to Buckley. Buckley's gonna run right to the 50 and now he's gonna get pushed down as he got to the 48 yard line. So Thompson on the tackle there for Widener and RPI only able to pick up two. RPI, five possessions, two punts, three touchdowns. Prior to this, their sixth possession. I mean, this with 208 yards on the game so far. Second down, handoff goes to Buckley. They'll run right again to the sideline. 45 to the 40, he's got some room along the 30, 25, 20, and finally caught inside the 15 yard line. Sean Lieber runs him down, but Buckley is out at the 14, and it'll be a first down for RPI there as they are in the red zone again. Two score lead for RPI, looking to make it three here in the first half. 7.25 to go in this first half. RPI up 20 to seven. Snap, and it's McCormick in there. Quarterback throws oh. for Faraday in the end zone and led him a little bit too far. Faraday trying to dive, keep a foot in bounds, but couldn't get to the ball. So an incomplete pass. So RPI, who's in the quarterback? You have to check every, basically every series now to see who the quarterback is. Right now, it's McCormick out there. It'll be a second down and 10 RPI at the 14 yard line. McCormick out of the shotgun. Allison is in a slot back position. Buckley is the running back for the engineers. Take the handoff to Buckley, pass to Allison. He's gonna get caught at the 15. And that'll be a loss of about a yard. If I'm not mistaken, that was Sean Lieber again on the tackle. If so, Sean Lieber's having a good game so far on defense for Widener. Well, yeah. Third down and 11 as the ball's back to the 15 yard line for the engineers. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Buckley in the backfield. McCormick is the quarterback. Gets the snap. He's going to roll right. Looks downfield. He's going to run with it. 15 10, and McCormick is out short of the first down. He went out at the eight, he needed to get about to the four. So RPI is going to send out the field goal team. To be five yards more than what an extra point is. They'll spot it at the 16 yard line. This will be a 26 yard attempt. Merrick the kicker, Meisner is the holder. Yeah, 25, we'll put it right on the 25 or the 15 part of me, so it'll be 25. From the right hash, he's a right-footed kicker. Snap, spots down. The kick is up, the kick is good. With 5.50 to go in this first half, RPI now has a 23 to seven lead. essentially gets RPI back the point from the missed extra point earlier in the game, plus some bonus points. RPI now dominating the total yards in this game, 248 to 79 for Widener. That first drive for Widener started at the 43. So 57 yards, that might have been a 62 yard drive because they had to basically get 15 yards back. They took a personal foul, they had to get 15 yards back. So the offense was actually out there for 62 yards, although the drive was only 57 yards. Pardon me, it was 57 yards, 72 yards total that the offense had to move. A poor math day perhaps for me so far. 23 to seven RPI leads, 550 to go, first half. Merrick tees off the ball at the 35-yard line, getting ready to kick off. And it goes into the end zone, and Widener will take this at the 25-yard line. And 
and we've got a flag on the play. This was out between the 20, 25 yard line. Odd to see a flag when it was a touchback. So is this some extracurricular activities? So unsportsmanlike conduct against Widener and that will back them up. They were going to start out at the 25 yard line. The ball will now be just beyond the 12. A number of personal fouls against Widener so far today. 23 to seven, RPI leads 550 to go first half. Widener first and 10 at the 13, we'll call it. Deal fakes the handoff, throws, that's complete to Van Skovich, and he's stopped at about the 17. So call that a pickup of four for Widener. Widener score, we talked about they have two stag balls. They've got 14 appearances in the NCAA tournament. You have those two stag balls. They recently, most recently made the semifinal in 2000 where they lost to Mount Union. And a lot of people can say that. Pass complete on second down to Vanskovich, and that'll be a first down for Widener at the 32 yard line. Found Vanskovich over the middle to deal, and Widener gets some breathing room as they move it further away from their goal line. Last time they made the NCAAs was 2014. They lost to Linfield in the quarterfinals. First and 10 for Widener at the 32 yard line on their own side of the field. 4.45 to go here, first half, 23 to seven, RPI leads. Handoff goes to Casey. He goes right and picks up about two yards. Miles Lafferty in on a stop there for RPI. Weiner trying to get the rushing game going. Prior to that play, I believe they had 27 yards rushing in today's game. And again, they had two 600, Baxter came in with 661 yards and Hostetter came in, oh no, pardon me. Thompson came in with 696 yards rushing, uh, leading this team. So this is a team that can move on the ground. And this time it goes to Casey, the number two rusher for Weiner this year. And he's going to make it out to the 44-yard line for a first down for the Pride. I was reading receiving yards, rushing yards. It was leading rusher is Thompson coming in and then Bryce Casey after him. Those are basically the only two that have triple digits in terms of rushing yards this year for the Pride. Time to remind you that this is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium in Troy, New York. Kurt Soto on the call for you. RPI leading wide now 23 to 7 with 340 left to go in the first half. Widener with a first and 10 at their own 44 yard line. Single receiver left, two in the slot on the right. This is a flea flicker and back to Deal. Deal's under pressure, gets away from it. He throws towards the sidelines and that's going to be incomplete. So it was the handoff to Thompson. He th tossed it back to Deal, but Deal was almost immediately under pressure from Sakar and had to run away from that and ends up throwing an incomplete pass. And so the flea flicker doesn't work for Widener. It'll be a second down and 10 for the Pride at their own 44 yard line. Three, four receivers on the left, one on the right. Deal alone in the backfield. Pass that is complete. And it's, it's caught by Baxter at about the 49. He was almost immediately hit on that play. And I think for, he, he was very fortunate to make that grab. Yeah, he, he actually caught it up by his shoulder. That was a very good catch by Baxter. Because he had a defender hit him right after the ball arrived and he had caught it in a very odd position up by his shoulder, but he's able to hold on to it and pick up five yards for the prize. It'll be a third down and five at the 49 yard line, 2.45 to go in the half. 
Two receivers right, one left for Widener. Deal is going to hand off to Thompson. Thompson pushes straight ahead, and he's got a first down. He puts his back. He used his back, actually. He just turned back around, pushed, and got past the 45 down to the 44 on RPI side of the field, and that's a first down for the Pride. Clock still running, 2.20 to go in this first half. RPI leading 23-7 to over Widener. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. You've got a tight end on the right as well. Thompson in the backfield with Deal. Deal takes a snap. Looking downfield, hit, and he, he looked downfield. I don't know how he missed a defender on that play. And that, it, Lafferty came in, and I don't know how he missed it. He was running straight at him, and it's like he didn't react. And he has sacked back at the Widener 47, and now we've got a timeout. RPI is going to call a timeout. It's going to be second and long for Widener, and RPI is looking to stop the clock and maybe get this ball back this half. So I don't know how Deal missed Lafferty, because Lafferty was just coming at him straight ahead, and he didn't react as though he was. And then he got hit and took the sack. So RPI burns their first time out of this first half. We have 151 to go in the half, 23 to 7, RPI on top. Five. stats for people and you look up for, for teams, Widener has a, a bizarre record uh, that they hold. They won the 1977 Stag Bowl over at Wabash. They hold the record for the most points allowed in the Stag Bowl but winning. They allowed Wabash 36 points and Widener scored 39. It doesn't matter. If you score more, that's all that matters. But that is the most that a Stag Bowl loser has ever scored in a game. Timeout is over with. Widener back out on the field along with the RPI defense. 151 to go in the half. It'll be a second and 19. At the 47. On their own side of the field for Widener. Deal out of the shotgun. All those receivers on the right. Deal looking downfield under pressure. Gets away from it. He's going to run with it. He's to the 50, to the 45, and he's going to slide down. Lafferty was going to tackle him and just managed to avoid him as he slid. Had he hit him, that probably would have been a penalty. Instead, he's just able to avoid him on the slide. He's down at the 46. That's where the slide started. And Widener is taking a timeout. That's not a first down. It's going to be third and about 12. As Widener is burning a timeout here because they feel now that they've got an opportunity to put some points on the board. Twenty-three to seven, RPI leads as the first half is winding down in Troy. That was about a pickup of seven yards. So rushing yards right now for Widener should be about fifty-one. As we're waiting to update, receiving yards at seventy-seven. So Widener. Widener's about 130 total yards in today's game versus RPI's 248. Widener, though, four for four penalties for 48 yards, and a number of those were personal foul penalties. That has not helped their cause today. Timeout is over with 138 to go in this first half. Widener with a third down and 12 at the RPI 46. Thompson leaves the backfield, goes in motion. There'll be a wideout on the left. This is a five wideout formation for Deal. Three man rush from RPI. Deal under pressure, and he's going to get sacked back at the 45. Ethan Johnson got a hold of him, took him down. And is anybody taking a timeout now? Looks like RPI took a timeout. Clock stopped with 1.29 to go in the first half. So RPI did call the timeout. 
So it's fourth and long. Obviously, Widener is going to be punting. And RPI with one timeout and control of the ball, looking to see if they can get some points on the board before they go in for halftime. Widener will get the ball to start out the second half. They won the coin toss to further selection to the second half. So it will be Widener's ball coming out of the locker room. That was goal out of coverage sack for RPI. They hit eight in coverage, only three rushing. And Widener's deal was not able to find anybody open downfield and ended up taking the sack back at his own 46. Deal with 22 touchdown passes this year. Not all, not everybody. Uh, Thompson, the running back, has two on the only two passes he attempted coming into today. And Michael Calorio has one in some pickup duty for Widener. Deal taking the majority of the snaps this year, 133 completions on 257 attempts coming into this year, or this game, pardon me, 2,165 2 yards passing, 22 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Salona is back around his own 31, waiting the snap for this punt. RPI's got a bunch of players up there, and this is a shank, and he shanked that kick. That went out of bounds. That hit well out of bounds at the 40. There's another flag coming out for a altercation around the 50-yard line, right in the middle of the field. So the punt was shanked. Where do they say it actually crossed out of bounds? They're trying to figure this out. They're, they're still walking around, and now you've got a flag on the play because of another altercation, and I can hear the coaches for Widener next to me getting irritated uh, by what's going on down there, uh, yelling after they saw the flag come out. So I don't know exactly who this is going to be on or where the ball is supposed to be spotted. So this is another unnecessary roughness call against Widener. So that'll be 15 yards for RPI. They're saying the ball was out at the 43, which is, uh, it probably didn't cross at the 43. I think it crossed a few yards beyond that. Nonetheless, it will go down to the 42 of Widener. That's where RPI will have the ball with 124 left to go here in the first half and RPI leading 23 to seven. First time that RPI is going to start out on Widener's side of the field. DiMatteo is in there at quarterback. Looking downfield, throws, and that is complete. Oh, no, dropped by Faraday at the 20. Should have had that. Faraday should have had that. He was open. He was alone. And unless that was thrown wildly off target, and I don't think it was, looking at the replay right now, Yes, he should have had that. Uh, Faraday should have made that completion. Instead, it goes incomplete. It'll be a second down at the 42-yard line. Second and 10 for RPI at the 42. 118 left in this first half. White again gets sent far to the right, and DiMatteo's going to throw. That is complete to Kelly. Kelly's got a first down as he makes a move, gets away from his defender, and he's at the 30-yard line. So RPI with a first down. Clock stops, so they move the chains with 1.10 to go in the first half. RPI quickly to the line. DiMatteo quickly to Goolsmith along the sidelines. Breaks free from one tackle and now runs out of bounds at the 23. So Goldsmith picks up about seven and also stops the clock with 103 to go in the first half. 23 to seven, RPI on top. Looking to get some points before they go into the locker room. Two receivers each side for RPI. White is in the backfield. DiMatteo the quarterback now for RPI. Second and three at about the 23 yard line on Widener's side of the field. DiMatteo looking left the whole time after the snap throws. That's complete to Kelly. He's got a first down to the 18. Clock stops, 56.4 seconds left in the half. RPI again to the line very quickly. And we've got an injured Widener player. And so that will be an official, there'll be a timeout on the field. And I believe Widener has to use a timeout for that.
or maybe not. The officials are talking right now. Clock, would, clock never started. They never, they never told them to clock, start the clock after. Okay, because, because of the injury, they'll start the clock on the snap instead of having it run, which it should have started running once they were ready to play. So 56.4 seconds left. RPI with a first and 10 at the Widener 18-yard line. Di Matteo scanning the field, throws short this time, and that's actually going to be at best a gain of one, as Faraday caught it at about the 17 on his forward progress. So clock is running, 45 seconds left to go first half. RPI trying to line up quickly. They only have one timeout left. They're lined up, 35 seconds to go. Di Matteo throws, that is complete to Faraday at the 11, and Clock is still running down to 25 seconds as RPI now has a third down and short at the 11 and RPI is going to take a timeout. 22.9 seconds left in the first half, assuming that's when it actually got called. Doesn't look like they're gonna add any time onto the clock, so that looks right. So 22.9 seconds left, RPI just burned their last timeout of this first half and they've got it with a third and, mm, call it about a three, maybe a four as they're on the 11 yard line, they need, yeah, call it a third down and three as they're on the 11, need to get to about the eight. 23 to seven RPI leads and what is kind of a slow moving first half here at the White Law Bowl in Troy, New York. RPI needs to know what they're going to do if this they don't get a first down and the clock is still running, they need to know what they're going to do now. If they get a first down, the clock stops and they can always spike the ball. They're close enough if they burn it down just to stop the clock, it's okay. But if this goes to a fourth down, they need to know what the plan is immediately. They cannot stop the clock. Di Matteo in a quarterback. White is the running back right now for RPI. Three receivers to the left. Faraday is alone on the right. And it's third down and three at the 11-yard line of Widener. And they're going to snap the ball, and Di Matteo is going to throw, and that's incomplete. He was under pressure, and he got hit right after he let go. There was also a problem with the clock, because the clock was still counting down a timeout. Didn't show the actual time. But now we're down to 19.3 seconds left on the incomplete pass. RPI can get the field goal unit out there. This will again be from the right hash, right-footed kicker Merrick. RPI looking to make this a 19-point lead going into the locker room. Snap, spots down, the kick is up. The kick is good. 16.7 seconds left. RPI now has a 26 to seven lead. So RPI able to do what they didn't do last week, pick up some points on field goals. RPI scored on their last three possessions. Di Matteo with the one yard run and then two American field goals. Officially that goes in the books as a 28 yard field goal. So Merrick will tee the ball up at the 35 yard line. RPI with a 19 point lead. Kick is away, fair catch signals, and Widener will take it, and that was caught at about the eight yard line by Holmes, and Widener will take it at the 25. So 
something we don't see. The rule is if you're inside the 25 between the goal line and the 25, if you signal a fair catch, you will get the ball at the 25 yard line in that range. You don't see a lot of schools using that. It doesn't happen a lot. Hobart was doing it, and now we've just seen Widener do it, but for a lot of schools, they just run it. Uh, and I'm sure for some places, they're, you gotta crunch the numbers and see how many times you're actually getting past the 25. Victory formation for Widener. RPI's out of timeouts, so they can just take a knee and go into the locker room. Nothing RPI can do about it, even if they wanted to. So the teams will head into the locker room here in Troy in the White Law Bowl with RPI leading Widener 26-7. 279 total yards for RPI versus 113 for Widener. I, Widener looked really, really good on that first drive today when they went downfield, took one penalty, got that, those yards back, went downfield, took the touchdown, took the lead, but after that, their drives have stalled, and RPI has up the pace on offense, switching out quarterbacks. DiMatteo and McCormick are going in and out. Some trick plays. Walker Sutton with a touchdown pass. And so RPI has shown a lot of different looks out there. How much of that is because Kazagnowski isn't playing or they just wanted to do it, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's a coaching decision, and obviously we're not going to be privy to those things before the game. Uh, but RPI moving the ball well on offense, putting up points, and they're going into the locker room with the lead today. Time to take a break here at the East Campus Stadium. The score after one half of play in the White Law Bowl for 2023, it is RPI 26 and Widener 7. And you're listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM, WRPI Troy.
all these other pieces of things. So they came in through that yep. and they got into the system because the, there was no firewall.
That's a loss of yards, and Widener turns over on downs at the 40, assuming that this penalty is against Widener. Okay, so Calorio has been in a quarterback for this drive. I Face mask against RPI, this will keep the drive alive for Widener. So RPI commits a personal foul, and Widener is going to keep the ball. Uh, so. I feel a little let down by Widener. RPI keeps swapping out quarterbacks, and uh, Levin now became 15, Calorio for Widener, and I was kind of hoping that Widener would be consistent with their quarterbacks. I guess not. So Calorio is in there at quarterback, and he's been since the start of this first half. He has the one pass, the one pass completion to Van Scovich. That was Calorio on that completion. The rest of the plays have been runs. So first and 10 for uh, Widener at the RPI 41 after the personal foul. That's a pass completion. That should be another first down to the 30-yard line. And yes, that is a first down. That is Hostetter on the reception from Calorio at the 30. And Widener will move the chains. 26 to 7 RPI leads. 11 and a half to go here in the third quarter. Yes, Widener has gone for the change in quarterback. Calorio out of the shotgun. Two receivers to the right, to the left also. They're stacked on the left. And Casey is in the backfield. He's going to leave the backfield. Calorio throws along the sidelines, and it's broken up. Frederick got, no, not Frederick. I think that was Fernandez who got in there for RPI and broke up the pass intended for Hostetter along the left sideline. Yes, that was Fernandez on the breakup. So it'll be a second down and 10 for Widener. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. And Casey in the backfield. Calorio is going to throw. This time he goes right, and it's too far. It was intended for Hostetter on the right side this time. He reached out but couldn't get to it. Right inside the five-yard line. It was just beyond his reach, and that's incomplete on second down. It'll be a third down and 10 now for the Pride. Springfield in the fourth quarter has picked up a touchdown, so it's 21 to seven now in Ithaca's favor. And they finished the third quarter. Oh no, five minutes to go in the third quarter. Union leads Delaware Valley 17 to six. Third down and 10 for the Pride. Five wide outs for Calorio. All alone in the backfield. Takes the snap. Looks over the middle, pass, that is complete, not a first down, that is not a first down. Van Scovich got it at the 22, they need to get to the 20. So Van Scovich over the middle from Calorio, gets them eight. And now it's a fourth down. They went for it on the other side of the 50 yard line, you have to go for it now, I would think, and they will. So Calorio stays out there. Fourth down and two for Widener at the RPI 22-yard line. Calorio pass that is high and almost, almost taken by Baxter as it may have deflected and Baxter had a chance at it, but it goes incomplete on fourth down and Widener turns it over on downs at the RPI 22-yard line. 10-17 to go. In this third quarter, RPI with a 26-7 lead gets the ball for the first time in this second half. And who does RPI have out there? Di Matteo is going to be out there for RPI at QB. RPI with a 
Left heavy line, and White's got a big hole. 25, 30, 40, to the 50. White is on his own to the 30, to the 20, 10, 5. White's in for the touchdown. No flags on the play, 78 yard run, and RPI leads 32 to 7. That was just a huge hole on the left side for White to run through. And then once he got past the line, uh, basically everybody was bunched up towards the line. Everybody was over either on the line or on the other side of the field. Once he got maybe five yards beyond the line of scrimmage, nobody was going to get him. And White is in for the touchdown. Merrick out to try the extra point. Snap, spots down, the kick is up, and the kick is no good, missed it right. But RPI gets six, and they've got a 32 to seven lead. On the 78 yard run by White. Ten oh five to go, third quarter. That's 78 yards in 12 seconds for RPI on the drive. And again, White was the Liberty League Rookie of the Year this year and the leading rusher for RPI. Looking at about 40 fans made the trek, the Widener fans that are sitting in the opposite side here at the East Campus Stadium. About 40 fans on that side. There may be a couple of others on this side. I see some blue uh, clothing on this side, which may just be people who like blue, or it could be Widener fans. Merrick kicks the ball away. This will be taken at the 10-yard line. 15, 20, 25 to the 30, and maybe about the 34 yard line on the return. And some jawing afterwards. There have been quite a number of personal fouls in this game. That was Chris Church on the return for Widener. A number of personal fouls in this game, uh, mostly against Widener. And there seems to be a lot of jawing on the field after some of these plays. Widener starts their second possession of this second half at the 33 yard line, now trailing by 25. Have to check and see who the quarterback is once he turns. Calorio is out there pass, that is complete, and that'll be a first down. Out to about the 46 to Baxter over the middle, so Calorio still stays in there at QB for Widener. Try and go quickly to the line, three receivers on the left, tight end on the right. And Calorio pass over the middle again, looking for Baxter, but overthrows him. And that goes incomplete. It'll be second down, and a little bit of breathing room, I guess, for Widener, they're not rushing to the line this time. Total yards now for RPI, 357 versus about 170 for Widener based on maybe 175 for Widener. Second down and 10. Calario is going to throw and that is intercepted by the engineers, taken away by Davis. Davis at the 50 to the 40, 35, 30 and pushed out of bounds. Calario ends up pushing him out around the 23 of Widener, but Davis with the first turnover today gets the INT, and RPI is in great field position to put some more points on the board. We've got 9.30 to go here in the third quarter. First turnover of the day, RPI now starting out at the 23 of Widener, best start for them today. They've scored on their last four possessions, two touchdowns, bracketing two field goals. Buckley in at running back, DiMatteo is the quarterback, fakes the handoff, 
Tosses looking for Faraday at about the five, but overthrows him well out of bounds. RPI looking to take firm control of this game if they can put up another touchdown here. RPI coming in with the most appearances in ECAC bowl games, 14 going into today, so this is the 15th appearance. The next best is Alfred. They have 13 appearances. They did not make it this year. Second down, Buckley's going to take the handoff. He's going to go right and was grabbed, slowed down somewhat, and finally stopped after a gain of two. Nate Brown had him at one point, but then he got ahead for about the two yards. I think Brown would have had him at the line of scrimmage that he held on to him. So a pickup of two. It'll be third down and about eight for RPI. Looks like they're at the 21-yard line. Two receivers each side, Buckley in the backfield, DiMatteo was the quarterback for RPI. Now Buckley shifts to his right. Third down and eight. DiMatteo looking downfield, throws into a crowd and it gets knocked away. And that was a case where the defenders actually kind of took each other out of the play. Young was the intended receiver for RPI. The defenders both got in front of him and both went for the ball. In the end, it works out as an incomplete pass for RPI. Could have easily been an interception. Uh, RPI is fortunate. If it had been, and if RPI could get a tackle quickly, they would have tackled him inside the possibly the 10, but that's not the way it worked out. So fourth down and eight, and RPI is going to go for it here. DiMatteo, Buckley stays in to block. DiMatteo's looking over the middle, throws, and that's caught complete to Meister, and he's in for the touchdown. Caught it like at about the one, and he just took a step. He's in, and RPI's got a 38 to seven lead. RPI trying to make this a 32 point lead as Merrick comes out to try the extra point. Kicking game has had some issues. Two missed extra points today, two missed field goals last week. Snap, spot, kick is up, and the kick is good. With 8.29 to go here in the third quarter, RPI has A 39 to 7 lead. They have 44 on the board. I don't think my math is that wrong. So I think they need to fix the scoreboard. Yeah, there they go. Okay, now it's back to 39. I mean, we all have bad math days, but I, I didn't think I was that wrong. So that was with 8.29 to go, third quarter. 21-yard pass from DiMatteo to Meisner. As RPI with the only two scores of the second half on their only two possessions of the second half. Merrick to kick off. Boots it. This is going to come down around the 20. Fair catch signal. And it's a loose ball covered by Widener. So the ball came loose. I think that was Lorenzo Green who signaled for the fair catch. He didn't get it cleanly, but he did cover it at the 28. So that's where Widener will take the ball. They don't get the fair catch because they didn't catch it. So the ball came loose and ends up being covered at the 28-yard line, so they get it there. It'll be first and 10 for Widener at their own 28. First down, Thompson takes it. He goes left, and Thompson will get pushed down at about 33. He'll get pushed down 33, 34-yard line. He'll get pushed down inbounds. 
As Calorio, Calorio is still in there at quarterback for Widener. Pride trail 39 to seven to RPI here in Troy. 4.53 to go fourth quarter in Springfield. Ithaca still with a 21 to seven lead. And they're going into the fourth quarter. Get to that in a moment. Handoff goes to Thompson. He goes straight up the middle on second down. And I think the forward progress is going to get him out to the 38 and that should be a first down for Widener. They're going into the fourth quarter. Union leading Delaware Valley 17 to six. And at the half, Hobart has a six to three lead on Utica. A somewhat lower scoring game than I think most people anticipated out in Geneva. First and 10 for Widener at their own 38 yard line. 7.20 to go here, third quarter. 39 to seven, RPI leads. Pass in the flat to Thompson, incomplete. Now that was a forward pass, RPI will pick it up, but it was a forward pass, it's incomplete, and that's... When things aren't going well, you can't afford a drop like that. And that was just, Thompson just didn't handle the ball. He was wide open, he was, the ball was there. He just didn't handle it cleanly and it ends up as a drop. Second down and 10 for Widener at the 38 yard line. Glorio takes the snap, moves to his left, throws complete, gets it out over the middle, and this is close to a first down. I, I think it's about a yard short, as it was complete to about the 47-yard line. Uh, Livingston on the reception for the Pride. Just a reminder, this is WRPI Troy with Engineer Football from the East Campus Stadium. Kurt Stutt on the call for you. It's the White Law Bowl, part of the ECAC Bowl Series. RPI leading 39-7 to with 6.45 to go in the third quarter. Glorio throws and it's incomplete on third down and about one. Uh, he led his man a little bit too much on that one. And Skovich was the intended receiver at around the 50 yard line. So it'll be a fourth down and one for Widener and the offense is staying out there. This is the last game of the season for both teams. So why not go for it? So fourth and one, three receivers to the right. Single running back and throw, that is complete. Yes, that is complete and that'll be a first down to the RPI 43 yard line. Nice catch by Hostetter in traffic. Gets Widener the first down. He had three guys around him and manages to pull that ball down. So it'll be a first and 10 for Widener at the RPI 43 yard line. 6.20 to go here, third quarter. RPI leading 39 to seven over Widener. Handoff goes to Casey. Casey runs into a wall, not only the defender, but also one of his linemen. Looks like he might be a little bit shaken up on this. So they're gonna call for an official timeout as Casey is slow to get up after that play. And he is easing his way over to the sidelines and Thompson's going to come in at QB. And Thompson looks like he's limping a little bit. No, he looks okay now. My bad. So a pickup of two for Casey on that run. It'll be second down and eight for Widener at the RPI 41 yard line. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. And the handoff goes to Thompson, and he goes straight ahead. Attempts to barrel over Brian McNeil, but McNeil got a piece of him, and that'll be a tackle for McNeil. Ball's down to the 38 for Widener, for what will be now third down and about five. Three receivers on the short side as they're on the right hash right now. So those three receivers on the near side, on our side here. And Glorio throws and that is complete inside the 20 yard line, inside the 15. And that's complete to Hostetter. 
So that's a first down inside the 10. That'll be at the nine yard line. It'll be a first and goal for Widener at the nine. Hostetter on the reception. Yeah, just got it in. Just got the foot down along the sidelines. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter. 39 to seven RPI leads Widener. First and goal from the nine. They'll fake the handoff throw, and it's a wide open. Is that Hostetter in the end zone? I think so. It's a touchdown for Widener. And they give now 13 on the board and waiting for the extra point attempt. So Hostetter on the TD reception gets Widener into double digits. And now Patterson is out there to try the extra point. Snap the spot. The kick is up, and Patterson's kick is good. We have 4.44 to go here in the third quarter in Troy. RPI 39, Widener 14. Widener scored 8.23 to go in the first quarter, and with 4.44 to go in the third quarter, they finally got their second score, so it's over 30 minutes have gone by between scores for Widener. Out of town, 2.50 to go in the fourth quarter. Ithaca leads Springfield 21 to seven. They've got 12.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Union leading Delaware Valley 17 to nine. And again, at the half in an ECAC game, Hobart leads at Utica 6-3. So if the scores hold up, the Liberty League would get four teams in the postseason and four wins on week one if they hold up. Kickoff is going to be... Whoa! Uh, miscue by RPI. The, the two players go for the ball, and suddenly they come free with it, and this could be a run back for a touchdown for RPI as Buckley ends up with the ball after a miscue, runs it back for a touchdown. No flags. So let me... Let me describe that a little bit better as RPI goes up 45 to 14. The kick was coming in short, so the return man and Buckley... They were both, they, they were, there were two players back there. The ball may have hit off one of them, I don't know. It's a live ball either way. But Buckley had to run back, get the ball, and then in the confusion, found a lane, goes downfield, and runs it back for the touchdown. Uh, so RPI quickly now up to 45 points on one of the more bizarre kickoff returns you're ever going to see, especially one for a touchdown. I mean, that had disaster written all over it until Buckley turned it around and made it a touchdown. Merrick out to try the extra point. Snap spot, the kick is up, and it's good. 46 to 14, RPI leads. Wasn't that long ago that Widener got on the board. So they're going to say it was 80 yards on the return for Buckley. RPI getting some good fortune there. As things have just pretty much gone extremely well for RPI after the first change of possessions. RPI was a three and out, and Widener took their first possession to start the game down for the touchdown, led seven nothing. After that, it's basically gone, everything's gone RPI's way today. Ball falls off the tee before RPI can kick it off. 
It's a final. Ithaca defeated Springfield 21 to 7. So the Bombers advance to the second round of the NCAA tournament. Ithaca coming off a loss to Cortland last week, which may have hurt their seeding, potentially put them on the road. Of course, Cortland with the win was 9 and 1. They ended up on the road at Endicott. So 9 and 1 may not have gotten Ithaca a road game or a home game anyway. And I think a lot of people are still questioning how Cortland ended up on the road. Looks like that's the first NCAA game to finish today and not unexpected because Springfield likes to run the triple option. Those games tend to not last very long. So they were over in two hours, 10 minutes. RPI gets a hold for this kickoff. Merrick boots it away. This will be taken at the six yard line to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and out of bounds along the sidelines. And now we, we've got a lot of jawing here. So what happened was the return man ran out of bounds. That was Church. He ran out of bounds and then went up and hit Merrick, the kicker, about five yards later along the sideline. Are we going to get a flag here or not? Coach Izerny is right there talking to the officials. He's saying, yeah, yeah, there's a flag. There's a flag down now. He's asking, what's going on here? The guy runs out of bounds and runs up and hits my kicker. What's going on? So the officials are talking about this. A lot of personal fouls from Widener today. That has, to say the least, not helped their cause. They trail 46 to 14. Just to let you know, in the fourth quarter, Cortland leads Endicott 20 to 17. Okay, and there must have been something else that happened because this is actually going against RPI on the personal foul. Can't always hear what the referee says, but this is going against RPI. So I'm not sure if he was pushed into the kicker, but the officials talked it over and they decided this is RPI's bad. So that'll be 15 yards against RPI. If you take out the personal fouls in today's game, it's a relatively clean game. If you take out those, there's not a lot of holding, pass interference, no, no pass interference, nothing like that. And first down, and that's going to be a sack for RPI. Calorio dropped back, looking to throw. And I believe for RPI, that was McNeil who got in and got the sack. So Widener is going to be back to the 41 yard line. They started out at the RPI 49 on this drive. So it'll be second down and about 20 for a widener. Thompson takes the handoff, trying to get back some of these yards, and he's gonna make it out to about the 47, and setting up a third and about 14. So this is the drive coming off the Buckley 80 yard touchdown return. After Widener had just scored their second touchdown of the game, they almost, they basically immediately gave up those points. And it'll now be a third and 14 for Widener at the Pride 47 yard line. Four wide receiver formation. Thompson in the backfield. He's going to stay in to block pass. That is complete to Baxter. He's going to duck out of bounds at the 43 of RPI. That is short of a first down. They started at the RPI 49, need to get to the RPI 39. So they're four yards short and the offense is staying out there. Two receivers on the left. Got basically two on the right. Thompson in the backfield for Widener. Florio takes the snap. Scanning the field, throws, and that is complete, and that'll be a first down inside the 30, and Widener gets it to about the 27. Hostetter on the reception for the Pride, and that quiets the crowd that was cheering on the RPI defense. So Widener gets a first and 10. They trail 46 to 14 with 2.20 to go in the third quarter.
Three receivers to the left, tight end on the right for the Pride. DiMatteo looking to throw, four-man rush from RPI. He's gonna get rid of the ball and overthrows Ian Hur, the intended receiver. And I'm using air quotes for that because I don't think he had any intention of that ball being in bounds. And that'll set up a second down play. 10 to go in the fourth quarter, Union 17, Delaware Valley nine. The Garnet Chargers holding on to their eight point lead. Second and 10 for Widener at the 27 yard line. Calorio to throw, looks along the sidelines, does he have a man? Yes, and he's got a touchdown. Baxter picks it up inside the five and is able to uh, fight off a defender, get into the end zone, and it's now 46 to 20. RPI on top. As the extra point, Patterson will come out to try the extra point. A lot of scoring in today's game. That is the fifth touchdown of this third quarter. Snap, spot, kick is up, and the kick is good. So Patterson puts it through after Baxter's touchdown reception, and it's RPI at 46 and Widener at 21. It was a 27 yard connection there for the touchdown. We had six scores in the first half and now we already have five scores in the third quarter. And the third quarter isn't over yet. Widener with the two touchdowns, getting their yards up, 285 yards on 71 plays, RPI 380 yards on 36 plays today. So it's still RPI with over 10 and a half yards per play versus Widener's just a shade over four yards per play. Kickoff, it's a short one, and it's onside and covered at the 45-yard line by Widener. It had to go at least 10 yards. It got just beyond the 45. The officials are going to talk about this to see if Widener touched it before that, I think. I don't think they did. They're going to decide they didn't. I don't think Widener touched it. I think that's clean. All right. They may have caught RPI off guard here. But it's going to be Widener's ball. So they've got it after the onside kick. Well executed by the Pride. And they've got the ball at their own 46-yard line. Looking to get back into this. They trail by 25 with 1.54 to go in the third quarter. Two receivers each side for Widener. Calorio throws sideline, that is complete. Nice move to shed his defense, of, uh, the defensive players around him by Van Skovich, and he's gonna get a first down. He should have a first down on his forward progress because I have, yeah, he's at the 43 of RPI before he stopped and brought down. And do we have a flag on the play? Wouldn't that, would not surprise me if we did. And this might be coming back. Ineligible receiver downfield against Widener. This will be coming back. Vanskovich, though, did a nice job. Caught the ball, shed his defenders, and made sure he got the first down, except it's not going to count. Widener's going to get back up five yards. So we'll be back to the 41 on Widener's side of the field as they have a first and 15. Three receivers right, tight end left. Handoff goes to Thompson, doesn't see anything straight ahead. Bounces out to the left, gets up to the 50. 
and he'll get stopped at the RPI 49. So he gets back the five yards plus another five yards to set up a second down and five for the Pride. Again, that is Calorio in at quarterback for Widener, replacing Chase Deal, the starting quarterback. He's Calorio has been there for the entire second half. Two receivers each side, second down and five for Widener at the RPI 49. Calorio looking left and his pass is tipped and knocked down and it goes incomplete. That'll make it a third and five for Widener. We are still in the third quarter here. 45.1 seconds left. And this is a long one in Troy. I mentioned the Springfield Ithaca game is already over with. With both new starts, and this game hasn't made it to the fourth quarter yet. Third down and five for Widener. Two receivers each side. Thompson, the running back, stays in the block. Pass, and that is incomplete. I think Baxter was the intended receiver. And Cassius Johnson was on defense, but Baxter was sitting down. He got knocked down at some point. Okay, they had pushed off each other. Johnson and Baxter had pushed off each other, and Baxter ended up slipping and going to the ground. So no pass interference. He was the, looks like he was the intended receiver. He just wasn't in any position to catch a ball. And it'll be fourth down and five for Widener, and they are going for it. Trailing by 25 nearing the end of the third quarter. Five receivers out, pass, that is incomplete. It was intended for Livingston. It was in his hands right near the marker. It would have, if he had caught it, it would have depended on where he fell. He probably would have had the first down. But instead, Widener turns it over on downs at the RPI 49 yard line. We have 36.5 seconds left in the third quarter. RPI leading 46 to 21 against Widener in the White Law Bowl here in Troy. First and 10 RPI. And McCormick is back in at running back and RPI has got a substitute, run, or pardon me, at quarterback and also a running back now is Ming. Damian Ming is in at running back for RPI. So McCormick returns, he started the game. He and DiMatteo have both played during the course of this game. There's been no situation where it was clearly one guy's got the job. So McCormick back in there at QB for RPI. Second down and RPI quick pass along the sidelines. That is complete to McGoey. McGoey goes out of bounds near the marker and he'll have him down at the 40 yard line. That'll be a first down for RPI as McGoey goes out. Clock stops while they move the chains, but once they start up, RPI does not have to run a play. The third quarter can end without RPI running a play. And they're gonna snap the ball anyway. First and 10, McCormick is going to sling it downfield and that is caught inside the, no, incomplete, incomplete. It looked like it was caught and no, instead it's incomplete. So no argument from RPI there. And that ends the third quarter in Troy as they'll go over to the sidelines for the engineers. Encarnacion was the intended receiver there. Couldn't catch the ball. And three quarters are in the books in Troy. RPI with a 46 to 21 lead over Widener. That was five touchdowns in the third quarter. Three by RPI for 20 points and two by Widener and they picked up 14 points. Union has picked up a field goal. No, nope, touchdown, pardon me. Five minutes left. Union has picked up a touchdown. They now lead 24 to nine over Delaware Valley.
Second and 10, RPI at the 40s. We're about to start out the fourth quarter of play in Troy. It'll be RPI going left to right. Widener right to left across your radio dial in this final quarter of play. McCormick's on the field. DiMatteo is going to throw the ball. That's complete short pass. But McCormick and DiMatteo were both out there again. We saw this previously where they both line up. And McCormick is usually lining up as some sort of wide receiver or running back. Uh, the pass only gets RPI about two yards. It'll be a third down and eight at the 38 of Widener. So they're both in the backfield. DiMatteo looks like he's behind center. McCormick's now going to go to the right, and he's going to be out in the flat. And DiMatteo now tosses this downfield, and is that caught? It looks like it's caught by Encarnacion. It is. And he's down to the eight-yard line, and it'll be a first and goal RPI. So Incarnacion, Incarnacion didn't handle a pass earlier, but he catches that one down to about the eight-yard line, and RPI's got a first and goal. 14.20 to go here, fourth quarter. RPI leading 46-21 over Widener. Four wide receiver formation. McCormick is in the backfield along with DiMatteo. Fakes the handoff to McCormick, and DiMatteo suddenly encounters Walker. Jalen Walker comes in and puts DiMatteo on the ground. He did not see that coming at all. Uh, it was immediately after the fake handoff to McCormick. So DiMatteo is going to go off the field, and I guess McCormick is now going to be the quarterback. So it'll be second and goal for RPI at about the 13-yard line. McCormick takes the snap. Looking downfield, under pressure, gets rid of the ball right as he's hit, and he misses Faraday uh, just by a little bit inside the 10-yard line. So that goes incomplete. It'll be third and goal RPI at 13. Two receivers each side for RPI. Ming is in the backfield. McCormick is the quarterback. As RPI does not have a full complement of starters out there at this point. McCormick takes a snap, looking in the corner for Walker Sutton, but that was not thrown well enough to be caught inbounds. And it'll be fourth down and goal from the 13 for RPI. This will give RPI a chance to practice their kicking game as Merrick will come out. This will be a 30-yard, 30, uh, 30 or call it a 30-yard attempt. Meisner on the hold. This lines up a little, this probably lines up with the left goalpost and Widener I believe just went offside somebody moved they're going to call this play dead I think it was through I think it was good but they blew the whistle before the kick made it so it doesn't count nope, false start against RPI this will back RPI up five So RPI can try a 35-yard field goal. The ball will be spotted around the 25. Well, the scrimmage should be the 18. About the 25 for the field goal attempt. Again, Meisner with the hold. Merrick on the attempt. Going against the wind towards the gymnasium. The wind is a little bit different there because the gymnasium does block the wind to some extent. Snap. Spot, the kick is up, and how is it? It's good. It's good. 49 to 21, RPI leads. So RPI has scored their last six offensive possessions, and they also have a touchdown a kickoff return for a touchdown thrown in there as well. As we are in the fourth quarter of the White Law Ball, RPI leading 46 to 24. Nope, they screwed up on the scoreboard. <laughs> it should be 
I can confidently tell you there's 13-22 left to go in the game. They were right on live stats. They don't have it right at the scoreboard. So they need to fix the scoreboard here. And you, can, and you can hear the crowd talking about it as well, that they need to get the scoreboard right. They're getting close. It's 49 to 24 now. They're getting close. Merrick has the ball teed up for the kickoff. There we go. Scoreboard is now correct on the score. 49-21, RPI with the lead. 13-22 to go. Ball is booted away, and Church is going to take it to the 15, to the 20, and he's out to the 25, 30, 35, and Church is going to run out of bounds at the 37. So Widener's 13, 13th possession today will start out at their own 37-yard line. A lot of scoring today, a lot of possessions. First and 10 for Widener at the 37, and they will go to the ground game, trying to get some yards here. And it's a... Casey with a straight ahead run and he gets out to the 43 yard line so that's a pickup of six for Widener as we're under 13 to go in today's game second and four Glorio looking for a chunk down field and it was closer to being caught by Davis Then Baxter, just the way the ball was headed in there. It goes incomplete, but it looked like Davis had a better chance of getting the interception than Baxter did of the reception. So it'll be third down and four. It's a final. Union has defeated Delaware Valley 24 to 16. So Union and Ithaca both win and advance in the NCAA tournament. Third down and four for Widener with a four wide out formation. Calorio drops back, looking, throws eventually, and that's incomplete. A dive around the 42 yard line by Livingston is not successful, and it'll be a fourth down and four for Widener. As we've got 12.33 left to go here in today's game. So Ithaca's a winner, Union's a winner. Hobart is leading Utica 6-3 to three with 10.53 to go in the third quarter. And that's all field goals right there. That's not a Hobart touchdown and a miss on an extra point. Those are all field goals. Fourth down and four. Widener's going to go for it. The four wide out formation. Calorio's going to pass. That is complete to Baxter, and he's got the first down at the 49-yard line. So the Pride convert and get it out to their own 49. Trailing by 28. Widener is as they have possession of the ball at their own 49 yard line for a first and 10. RPI looking for the record setting 12th ECAC Bowl victory. They are tied with Alfred for 11 victories historically. Passes incomplete. Dow bumped into the intended receiver, Vance Vanskovich as the ball was arriving, as they were both going for it basically, and it goes incomplete. So it'll be a second down and 10 for Widener at their own 49 yard line. You can hear the wind, the wind's picked up a little bit here in Troy. It's in the 40s and windy, so it is chilly out, however you wanted to find chilly. And pass, is that picked off? Yes, picked off. Calorio threw and just diving for it was Lapioli and he's got the interception at the 35 yard line. Six, 
second INT for Widener today. 12.01 to go in today's game. RPI leading 49-21 as they've got the ball at their own 35. Four, oh, pardon me, 11th possession for RPI today. They've only failed to score on two possessions. RPI, Ming's gonna take the carry. He's gonna run to the right, go to the 45. Flag came out at the very beginning of this play. And this is probably a holding call against RPI and I think this one's coming back. DiMatteo is in there at quarterback and he is not moving up field with everybody else. I think he sees the writing on the wall as well as if all the teams are backing up. So it's a holding call against RPI and that'll back up the engineers. So RPI is back to their own 25 for a first and 20. Single receivers each side. You've got a tight end and a slot receiver on the right. RPI is going to run in that direction. Then Ming's going to change direction, go left, and he'll get out to the 30-yard line. So RPI trying to chew up some clock here. Union with the win. We'll be playing Johns Hopkins next week. They have a big lead over Western Connecticut in the fourth quarter. That's a 42-point lead by Johns Hopkins. So uh, that's Union's next game. That will be on the road. Johns Hopkins is probably the highest seed in that section of the bracket. RPI went down and played Johns Hopkins back in 2018. Pass complete. RPI gets it out to the 43-yard line. And that's Walker Sutton on the reception for RPI on a second and long, which will make it a third and a much more manageable two for RPI as they're out to their own 43-yard line. Back in 2018, RPI went out and played Johns Hopkins out in Baltimore. A very convincing win by Johns Hopkins in that game. Uh, they would lose the following week. That was the national quarterfinals. Johns Hopkins would lose in the semifinals, but that's a perennially strong program. And that would be a tough game for the Union Garnet Chargers next week. RPI goes to the ground on third down and short. And they did not make the first down, only made it out to the 44-yard line. And that was Ming on the carry. Also an injured player. One of the Widener players is down and slow to get up. So we'll have an official timeout here in Troy. 10.07 to go in the fourth quarter. RPI 49, Widener 21. And I was mentioning, uh, so Union will be at Johns Hopkins next week. Ithaca is going to play the winner of the Randolph-Macon-Christopher Newport game. which is being led by Randolph Macon, the home team in that game. They're in the fourth quarter with five minutes left and Randolph Macon has an 11 point lead. Uh, I'm going to assume this would probably be on the road. Randolph Macon was a 10 and 0 team this year. They are probably the higher seed. So Ithaca is probably going to be on the road for that one. Union certainly will be on the road against Johns Hopkins. Uh, so it does not get easier in the NCAA tournament. You can't expect to win and then play an easy opponent. And it's going to be tough for those two teams next week. That'll be Union and Johns Hopkins and Ithaca and Randolph-Macon. They're both on the same bracket. So if they were to win those games, they would end up playing each other. Uh, but they both have to win in order for that to happen. One other game of note, Alfred State from the ECFC, probably the weakest football conference in Division Three, won the auto bid and they got sent to Mount Union. That's a Mount Union 42 to 14 lead in the fourth quarter, which is probably a bit closer than people thought it would be. Uh, but I don't think there's any question that Mount Union is going to win that game. And also uh, in the East, Cortland now has a 23 to 17 lead on Endicott with about 253 left to go in that game.
Fourth and about one for RPI, and the punt team is out there. I would assume that RPI is going to punt this with a 28-point lead. Yep. They'll kick it back, and Burke kicks it away. And it'll be taken. Is that a fair catch? That was a fair catch signaled, and he got leveled by an RPI, some part of being a member of the RPI coverage team. That was Pure Matty on the punt return. He didn't move. So I think the officials are now going to talk about whether he signaled a fair catch. I didn't see it, but it could have been before I turned and looked as I was watching the ball, so I can't say for definitively whether he did or not. The flags came out. So that'll be a personal foul against RPI for leveling him. He did signal a fair catch. So that'll be a personal foul against RPI leveling him, and it'll, the ball will come out to the 29-yard line. That's where Widener will take over. We have 9.48 to go in today's game. What has been... I cannot recall a game with this many personal foul calls that RPI has played. Balls out to the 29, first and 10. Calario throws, Calario throws and complete, and that's a nice run there uh, by Vance Govich as he got through traffic. He caught it around somewhere around the 38, and he made it all the way out for a first down to the 46 and had to get through a lot of traffic to get there. So that for drive for RPI, only the third today in which they did not score points. 49 to 21, RPI has the lead, 9.24 to go here, fourth quarter. First and 10 for Widener at their own 46 yard line. Two receivers each side. Glorio throws to Thompson in the flat. He's got it, 35, 45, 50 to the 45 of RPI and dives forward. They're gonna say he touched down at the 45, so he's a yard short of a first down. So second down and one for the Pride at the RPI at 45. Ground, Thompson, hole, he's got it on the right side and he's ahead for the first down, gets to the RPI 38. Clock is running. Well, it will be running once they set the, the ball. There we go. 8.35 to go in today's game. 49 to 21, RPI leads Widener. This is the White Law Bowl here in Troy, New York. Sunny Troy, New York. Cold Troy, New York. First and 10 at the 38 for the Pride. Glorio looking downfield. It's going to get hit, and he's going to get caught. And I think he, he may have gotten, yeah, he got back to the line of scrimmage. Sicard got him from behind, but he did get back to the line of scrimmage. So I don't think that'll go into the books as a sack. He, maybe, maybe a foot. He lost a foot on that. So it'll be a second down and 10 for Widener at the RPI 38. Glorio throws, that is complete to Casey who came out of the backfield and he'll be out at the 35 yard line. Connolly on the tackle for RPI to get him out of bounds. And now it'll be third down and about seven. As the ball's at the 35. Again, Calorio coming in to start the second half, replacing Deal, the original starting quarterback for Widener. The receivers left, one right. Calorio drops straight back, doesn't have anything, fumbles the ball, picks it up in stride, and he's down to the 30 as, as he picked it up and he had to move forward to get it. He lost his balance and falls forward to the 30 yard line. And that'll make it a fourth down and two. And at this point, you go for it. Widener trailing by 28. Thompson will be the running back. Gloria out right of the shotgun. Two receivers each side, low snap, picks it up, loses the ball, picked up by RPI, and Sicard will get it to the 50-yard line. 
So it was going to be a turnover on downs. They had trouble with the snap. Uh, he finally picked it up, lost the ball, and Sicard gets it at the 50. That goes into the books as a fumble. RPI has it at the 50 with 6.28 to go in today's game, and RPI leading 49-21. Third turnover for the Pride today. For RPI, if they can just get some ground game going here and take time off the clock, that would suit everybody's purposes. We have a new quarterback for RPI. This is Ming takes the handoff and he stopped at the 50 yard line. That's Garbolino. Frankie Garbolino is right now playing quarterback for RPI. Assuming that's not Anderson Burke playing quarterback for RPI, they're both number seven. Now I gotta look at the sideline and see if, if Burke is out, is, is on. Yeah, there's another seven out there, okay. So, Garbolino is in at quarterback for the Engineers. Three receivers, Allison's the tight end on the right side. Handoff to Ming on second down. Ming goes towards the sidelines and he's gonna get pushed out of bounds at the 46 of Widener. It'll be a third down and six for RPI. They have to get to the 40. So five quarterbacks between the two teams have gone in there to take snaps. Not to mention Walker Sutton threw a touchdown pass for RPI. Garbolino looking to throw on third down. He gets hit and he'll get sacked. He's down at the 46. Cade Brennan with the sack for Widener. So RPI not able to move the ball on that series. But they are taking time off the clock as we're down to 4.45 to go in today's game. 49-21, RPI leads Widener. RPI looking for their 12th ECAC Bowl victory. Randolph Macon has defeated Christopher Newport. 28-20. The snap back to Burke for the punt. The kick is away, it bounces. RPI is going to touch this around the 15 yard line inadvertently. And that's where Widener will take over with 4.11 left to go in today's game. So for RPI, that is the first time they've had consecutive possessions where they were unable to score. 12 possessions, eight of them they scored on, plus they've got a kickoff return for a touchdown. Widener gets the ball at their own 16 yard line. So Randolph Macon will be Ithaca's opponent next week. And Union's still waiting for the Johns Hopkins game to finish. Cortland has defeated Endicott 23 to 17. So the Red Dragons move on. They play the winner of the Susquehanna Grove City game next week. First and 10 for Widener back at the 16 yard line. Pass, that's complete. And I'm hearing grumbling like there's a fumble, but I didn't think that happened. Vanskovich on the reception for Widener to the 21 yard line. As we're under four minutes to go in today's game. And Grove City defeated Susquehanna. That's 21 to 20, that's a final. So Cortland will be playing Grove City. Grove City was on the road for that game, so. Those are both road teams. We'll have to see who's going to be the home team. I'm going to bet Grove City. Second down throw. That is complete. Whoops. Ball comes loose and now covered. Was that an incomplete pass? Incomplete pass. So Livingston and Baxter with two receivers in that area. And I, it was uncertain whether it was caught or just it was incomplete pass or caught in a fumble and they were incomplete pass. That'll make a third down and about six for Widener at the RPI, or pardon me, at their own 21 yard line. Widener trailing by 28 late in the game. Another throw, that is complete. Yep, that's a first down 
out to the 32-yard line to Baxter. So Baxter gets the completion from Calorio. And Widener gets it out to the 32. And Widener will call a timeout with 3.22 to go in today's game. I believe that's the first timeout of the second half. The scoreboard showing zero timeouts for both teams. So they weren't keeping track downstairs, but I believe that's the first time out. Johns Hopkins has defeated Western Connecticut 62 to 20, so that's a final. And uh, that's official now. Union will play Johns Hopkins, almost certainly at Johns Hopkins next weekend. They have a nice field. I like the, the location of the field. It was, it was a more urban environment than what you would normally see on Division Three schools. Here we have first down and 10 after the timeout. Widener has that their own 32, trailing by 28 points to RPI. In the fourth quarter. Four wide receiver formation for the Pride. New quarterback in for the Pride. And I'm gonna have to look up. He got a flag on the play. And that came out when the quarterback was on the other side of the field. He got tackled on the near side near the 34 yard line. So who do we have in right now for Widener? You're not on my cheat sheet. That looks like a number 10 out there. And I don't have a 10 on the roster. So at the moment, I'm not sure who's lining up at quarterback for Widener. The Pride, with 3.14 to go, have a first down and 10 at the 22-yard line. Yep, that's clearly a number 10. That's a pass. That's completion to Bax Baxter at the 30, and he's going to be out at the 31. So the roster we were given does not have a 10 on it. There's a travel roster we were given. There is no number 10. Second down, or second down and about 11, and that's going to be an incomplete pass along the sidelines with 2.40 to go on the second down. So it'll be third down and about 11 for the Pride. They're still putting Calorio on the stat sheet. But that's that's not a 15, that's a 10 out there. So third down and 11 for the Pride. Throw that is complete along the, no, incomplete along the sidelines. It was intended for at Livingston, but it goes incomplete. It'll be fourth down and long now. So the Biden will send out the punt team. That is Kevin Mowry in at quarterback now. For the Pride. Again, not listed on the travel roster, but well, that's a number 10 out there. So I guess there were some changes. Fourth down, 49-21 RPI leads. The Pride are punting the ball away. And fair catch signal, and RPI will take it at the 44-yard line. Again, looking for some ground game here. That was the 15th possession for Widener. This is the 13th possession for RPI. Forty-nine twenty-one. RPI leads here in Troy as we're winding down the Whitelaw Bowl. 
First and 10, Engineers at the 44-yard line. This is a direct snap to Walker Sutton. He's going to get free to the 40, to the 35, to the 30 along the sidelines. I think he stepped out. He's forced out inside the 10. Nope, he, they're going to say he didn't step out earlier. He's down inside the 10. And it'll be a first and goal RPI with 2.19 to go in today's game. RPI looking to add some more points up there. That was Walker Sutton with the direct snap. Whether you want to call that a, he's the quarterback or not, he did throw a touchdown pass earlier in the game. So, you know, you can count him as the third quarterback for RPI. Three quarterbacks have played for Widener. RPI allowing the clock to run. 150 to go in today's game. RPI with a 28-point lead. And Walker Sutton takes a direct snap again to the 10. Walker Sutton stays on his feet and goes out of bounds at about the six. They'll say he was tackled inbounds and the clock still runs. Now, nope, now they're gonna say out of bounds. What are they saying? Oh, flag on the play. Well, we, could, we had to have that. We couldn't leave without another one of those. So the officials will talk this over. There's 133 on the clock here in Troy. RPI is going to win this. It's just a question of what the final score will be. An unnecessary roughness call against the defense. And another flag just came out. Another flag just came out. This came from the umpire, who was 15 yards away from the referee when he was making that call. I cannot imagine this is anything but another unsportsmanlike conduct, unnecessary roughness call. And there'll be another call against Widener. So an unsportsmanlike conduct call half the distance, another unsportsmanlike conduct call half the distance. I have never seen a game with this many unsportsmanlike conduct calls without some sort of fight at the end. That has been the penalty of the day, more so than any other penalty. A few holdings, an ineligible receiver downfield, uh, mostly it's been unnecessary roughness. RPI is going to go into the victory formation as DiMatteo is back out there at quarterback as they've got a first and goal inside the five. Uh, obviously, Widener has timeouts, and they are not going to use them. RPI is just going to take knees and get to the end of this game. 49 to 21, RPI leads. We're under a minute to go. It's just a matter of playing this one out, or actually just taking some more knees. It'll just be one. RPI is waiting for the game clock to get under 40 seconds, which it has just done. RPI is going to take another knee. They don't have to run the ball again, and it'll be final in about 30 seconds. RPI is going to win the White Law Bowl for the 2023 season. They won it last year against Morrisville, and they've won it this year against Widener as the teams are going to line up for the post-game handshakes as we're under 20 seconds to go in today's game. That makes it the third win for Liberty League teams today. Union and Ithaca already winners. RPI a win here. Uh, if you're curious, before this one becomes official, the fourth game is going into the fourth quarter, just started the fourth quarter. Utica has a 10-6 lead over Hobart in the final game involving Liberty League teams. That was a one o'clock start, so that one is trailing all the other games. Uh, most of the NCAA games are winding up, although there are a few late ones because they're in different time zones. So it's official here in Troy. RPI wins the White Law Bowl 49-21 over Widener for RPI. That is their 12th ECAC Bowl victory in 15 appearances. Both of those are records. Those are the most wins and those are the most appearances by any team in the ECAC Bowl series. For Widener, they take the loss. It's their sixth appearance in an ECAC Bowl. They're now 3-3 three three in ECAC Bowls. Uh, so the first time these two teams ever met, RPI is going to come out with a victory. Uh, if you saw the first two drives of the game, RPI and Widener, that's not the way the game went. That was an RPI three and out, a Widener sustained drive to get them a touchdown, and the game immediately shifted after that. RPI started getting drives and scoring points, and Widener couldn't get the offense moving, and didn't start really picking up 
more scores. They didn't pick up any scores until 444 to go in the third quarter when they got their next touchdown. And by that point, RPI had already enough, enough points. RPI was already up to 39 points at that stage of the game. Uh, and, and Widener is basically out of it. Uh, reserves going in, some sloppy play later, and the the story of the game in terms of penalties is just so many personal foul penalties in today's game, mostly by Widener, uh, more than RPI. RPI, I think, had two and Widener had the rest, but there were a lot of them, and those were more penalties than anything else out there. Uh, so whatever was going on in the field, it was an odd one in terms of the flags. As you are listening to WRPI Troy just finishing up the football season. RPI with the 49-21 win over Widener. Uh, time to run down the scoring in today's game. It was a lot of scoring. Uh, back in the first quarter, 8.23 to go first quarter. Deal to Hostetter on a 15-yard touchdown pass. Patterson's kick, Widener led 7-0. RPI would answer back, 7.59 to go in the first quarter very quickly. That was Walker Sutton. On, an, on a wide receiver option to White on a 48-yard pass. The kick failed. It was 7-6, Widener. And then with 3.31 to go in the first quarter, DiMatteo to Faraday on a 20-yard touchdown pass. Merrick's kick put RPI in the lead to stay 13-7. That was the score for the first quarter. Second quarter, all scoring by RPI. DiMatteo with 10.20 to go in the first half. A one-yard run. Merrick's kick made it 26-7. 27-7, RPI, pardon me. And then Merrick with 5.50 to go, a 25-yard field goal, and then with 17 seconds to go, a 28-yard field goal. Those two scores made it 23-7, then 26-7. That was the score at the half. RPI 26-7 over Widener. In the third quarter, RPI extended their lead. White with a 78-yard run. First play from scrimmage when RPI got the ball to start out in the first possession of the second half. That was with 10.05 to go in the third quarter. The kick missed right, and RPI led 32-7. to and then DiMatteo to Meisner on a 21-yard touchdown reception with 8.29 to go in the third quarter. Merrick's kick made it 39-7 RPI. Wagner, me, Widener would get on the board finally in the third quarter. 4.44 to go in the third quarter. It was Calorio to Hostetter on a touchdown pass. Patterson's kick made it 39-14 RPI. On the ensuing kickoff, Buckley ran it back 80 yards for a touchdown. Merrick's kick then made it 46 to 14. That was 14 seconds later. That, that's how long that took. And then with 156 to go in the third quarter, Calorio with a touchdown pass to Baxter for 27 yards. Patterson's kick. The third quarter ended with RPI up 46-21. Fourth quarter, the only scoring was with 13-22 left to go. Merrick hit a 35-yard field goal to put RPI up 49-21. And that would be the final here in Troy. RPI 49, Widener 21. RPI with the win improves to 8 and 3 overall. They finished the season with a win and their, again, 15th bowl victory in program history. Widener, they end up the season with a two-game losing streak, counting this game and their loss at Delaware Valley last week, and they finished with an overall 7-4 and four record. Engineers of the game. Uh, there are a lot of people played here for RPI today, just a lot of people. Uh, Multiple quarterbacks playing on offense for RPI. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm going to pick an engineer of the game, it's going to be White. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people you can go with here, but the rookie of the year, White, netted 107 yards on five attempts. That included a long 78-yard touchdown run, averaging 21.4 rushes per yards per rush. Uh, you could also go Faraday with five receptions for 70 yards. Uh, Di Matteo was 13 of 20 passing with two touchdowns. There are a lot of people where I'm going to give it to White uh, with the good run. And, you know, you netted, eight, you know, 107 yards on the day. Only RPI rusher to get over 100 yards. So he's my offensive engineer of the game. On defense, uh, Anthony Diagostino. Uh, he's going to be, he had 11 total tackles. Uh, and one for a tackle for a loss. He's going to be my defensive engineer of the game. RPI, again, after that first series, they traded series in the first quarter. After that, RPI was the dominant team out here. Kazagnowski, the starting quarterback most of the season, uh, was not even listed today. DiMatteo and McCormick both played, and RPI got the offense back going and picked up the victory. Widener, it, it just kind of went wrong in that first half. Uh, RPI controlled 
after Widener's first possession, RPI controlled the pace of play after that. And the defense, which for RPI has been strong all season, even when they lose, they tended to play a very good game. Uh, they basically kept Widener from moving the ball down the field, forced Widener into punt after punt after punt after punt as RPI was adding points, making a 26-7 score at the half. And then RPI opened it up with the two more scores very early in the third quarter, just putting the game out of reach at that point. Uh, but for Widener, you have to wonder if they could have moved the ball a little bit better in that first half. Uh, could they have kept it closer? E just one score. A 26 to 14 versus 26 to 7 going into the locker room would have made a world of difference if they could have just gotten one of those drives moving downfield. But the RPI defense playing strong and the Widener offense was just not able to do anything. Change of quarterback goes into the second half. Widener changes the quarterbacks. They get two scores, but at that point, RPI had a substantial lead, and it was probably not possible for Widener to get back into the game. So if you're looking at it from a Widener standpoint, you know, the, the problems happened when RPI took control of the game in that first half and just didn't let Widener move downfield and force him into punt after punt after punt. And for RPI, the defense played well when the offense had trouble early on, then the offense was adding points. And before you know it, RPI's got a lead that's not going to be overcome. So that's going to be it here from the East Campus Stadium. It was a long one, RPI versus Widener, in this ball game. Uh, before we leave, we would like to thank the Rensselaer Union. They provide the funding for WRPI and all the club-related activity of the Institute, and that includes WRPI's coverage of engineer football, hockey, and baseball. Also, WRPI is on the World Wide Web. Point your browser to WRPI.org. And you pick up our broadcast 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as long as we're sending something out over the air. We'll provide it for you on that feed. That is WRPI.org. Just to run you down the scores in the Li other Liberty League teams today, finals in the NCAA tournament. Union defeated Delaware Valley 24-16. And Ithaca defeated Springfield 21-7. to And that sets up Union against Johns Hopkins next week and Ithaca against Randolph-Macon. And almost certainly both of those teams, Union and Ithaca, will be on the road for the next round of the playoffs. The two teams are playing were undefeated and certainly higher ranked than they were going into the NCAA tournament. So that's what's going on out of town. And in the last game for a Liberty League team, 12-28 to go fourth quarter, Utica leads Hobart. 10 to 6. That was a 1 o'clock start, so that game is trailing. Uh, I would like to thank Willow back at the station for making sure we got it out over the air this year, and everybody back at the station who has made these football broadcasts possible. We have to have somebody sitting in the station for us, and we appreciate everybody's efforts to go down there and make sure we can bring sports broadcasts to you over WRPI. And I'd also like to thank Ed DeGarian and Yancey Roy, who have joined me for games this season on the air. My name's Kurt Studd. I would like to thank you for listening to today's game here from the East Campus Stadium in Troy. It was the Scotty Whitelaw Bowl as RPI was against Widener in today's action. And the final score here from the East Campus Stadium, it was RPI 49 and Widener 21. And you've been listening to live coverage of Engineer Football on 91.5 FM WRPI Troy.